Assalamu alaikum. So we carry on with our endocrinology clinical series. And today we will talk about hypothyroidism. And this particular diagnosis is autoimmune thyroiditis. So the requisite knowledge, self study needs to be done on these, uh, these aspects of thyroid hormones. Um, and what will be covered in this particular lecture will be the various clinical aspects, physiological and clinical aspects of hypothyroidism. Okay, so this is the history. Uh, we have our uh, patient called Roxana Iqbal. She's a 46-year-old administrator at a local firm. She complains of uh, gaining weight despite eating less over the past year or so. She also complains of uh, very little energy, feels cold while everybody's feeling hot constipated, heavy menstrual flow. On physical examination, the physician notes a neck uh, was very full, i.e. the neck area was uh, had a big swelling, uh, generalized swelling. Uh, the physician suspected Rusana as having hypothyroidism and ordered some labs. The lab results, uh, now very key to observe, is look at the T4, which is decreased. Uh, Significantly, TSH is well through the roof, it's very high. T3 resin uptake decreased, and thyroid antimicrosomal antibodies increased. Okay, so this is a hint antibodies against the thyroid gland itself obviously uh, points to an autoimmune disorder. Based on these results, uh, the doc. Uh, diagnosed her as having autoimmune thyroiditis, also called Hashimoto's thyroiditis, and he prescribed Ruxana with a synthetic T4, also called L-thyroxine, basically thyroid, a synthetic thyroid hormones. And for the dosage, uh, the correct dosage of uh, this uh, synthetic T4, he uh, monitored her TSH levels. So we now go on to questions. Okay, so question number one is regarding her symptoms. Uh, Roxana's symptoms, that we, as we noted, was weight gain and cold intolerance. Uh, how is hypothyroidism diagnosed from looking at these two symptoms? Justify. So as usual, you're given time, TikTok, think about it. Okay, so all you have to do is basically remember uh, what thyroid hormones uh, do, what is the function of thyroid hormones. Also review my video on hyperthyroidism, Graves' disease, and just flip it, reverse it. So you will know that uh, thyroid hormones are, uh, are supposed to increase BMR, increase uh, the, uh, the basal metabolic rate such that lots of substrates are used up and uh, there is weight loss. So if you reverse that, if you decrease the BMR, uh, then obviously there will be weight gain because the metabolism will uh, be down. Okay, uh, and cold intolerance is because it is the thyroid hormones which, uh, by increasing the metabolism, they produce more heat, and hence if they are not being used or not they are not enough, then you will obviously have a uh, opposite to what hyperthyroidism is. You have cold intolerance. Okay. Okay, so question number two, it's about critical thinking. So in a case, in any clinical case, what's the primary concern? One is patient care, of, of obviously. Uh, but to care for the patient, what do, we do, what do we need? We need a diagnosis, okay? So we need to apply a lot of critical thinking in clinical medicine to come up with a diagnosis. And to come up with, that, with a diagnosis, what do you require? Uh, roughly speaking, say you have two, three, or maybe five, six probable causes of uh, the reason of the symptoms of your patient, okay. in all cases, let's say. You have to narrow this down. It's called differential diagnosis. Okay. And then you have to narrow it down and pinpoint to one so that you can start treatment. So in this case, what is Rosana's hyperthyroidism coming from? What is wrong with her? So for that, you need to review where is my annotation 
here it is. You have to review the same hypothalamic anterior pituitary thyroid axis that we did for Graves' disease, okay? Uh, then you have to list mechanism that could result in decreased. So you just have to go through what can probably go wrong, okay? Uh, we'll do that in the answer section. And then uh, we need to distinguish and pinpoint uh, which, which uh, part of this whole axis is, is misbehaving raising uh, this hypothyroid picture in this patient okay as usual you have time think about it think critically okay so basically you have three possible mechanisms before that we we'll just quickly revise what's going on here hypothalamus releases the trh which uh, stimulates uh, anterior pituitary to release tsh and then TSH basically stimulates thyroid to produce T3 and T4. Very importantly, and this is to note here, this release T3, T4 keeps a check on the anterior pituitary through a negative feedback loop so that it does not release abnormal amounts of TSH, which then abnormally stimulates thyroid, which then produce lots and lots of thyroid hormone and plays a wreck in the body. And this is the basis of Graves' disease, right? Now, keeping this in mind, remember TRH is released by hypothalamus, it controls anterior pituitary, anterior pituitary releases TSH, which controls thyroid, and then thyroid sort of controls its own function by the hormones that it produces, which are in a feedback loop connected back to the anterior pituitary. So TSH is keep, kept in check by, th by the product that it stimulates. Okay, this is a very nice uh, self-restricted loop. So if you have to solve a hypothyroid problem, uh, there are really three potential mechanisms that you need to be thinking about. One is, well, maybe hypothalamus has gone berserk, okay? It, it has gone silent or it's producing less TRH. That's possibility one, number one. Uh, possibility number two is maybe uh, hypothalamus is fine. However, anterior pituitary <clears throat> is not working properly and hence it's not making enough TSH. Okay, hence it's not uh, stimulating the thyroid or, uh, thyroid properly to produce enough uh, thyroid uh, hormones. Or, or, or thirdly, uh, everything is fine. It's just that the thyroid gland itself is is uh, is the problem. There may be an autoimmune destruction or uh, some sort of uh, surgery happened on this woman, and uh, thyroid gland was removed. Now. Uh, hypothalamic uh, abnormal function is very rare, whether it's uh, Graves' disease or where, whether it's hypothyroidism. Remember that. Hypothalamic malfunction is rare. Okay, it does happen, but it's rare. Uh, primary pituitary uh, uh, failure, uh, anterior pituitary failure, yes, it, it may happen. And thyroid function malfunction is the most commonest cause of hypothyroidism. Remember that. In clinical medicine, you need to remember these prevalence uh, facts, you know, these, these tidbits uh, for a quick diagnosis. And then you have to confirm it and uh, it nicely gets confirmed. So how do we, how do we limit, how do we pinpoint which of these three is the case in this case, is the, is the issue in this case, okay? Now check this out. Thyroid hormones will be decreased in all of the, all of the above, okay? If the hyper, hypothyroidism is, is being caused by decreased TRH or decreased uh, TSH or thyroid itself is not producing enough, in all these scenarios, thyroid hormones will be less naturally, right? Uh, uh, therefore, uh, hypothyroidism uh, symptoms will be evident in all the three conditions, wherever the issue is, at top, middle, or lower wherever so these two things obviously cannot help us pinpoint our issue okay so how how do we pinpoint it tsh we look at tsh okay in this case in ruxana's case as you remember tsh is through the roof okay so it cannot be that anterior pituitary is at fault anterior pituitary is working fine if it hadn't been working fine you wouldn't have increased TSH in this scenario, but you do. So, and hypothalamus is also fine because 
anterior pituitary is working fine. So hypothalamus is releasing the appropriate amount of TRH and it's doing its job on the anterior pituitary. Anterior pituitary, however, is producing lots and lots of TSH, which it shouldn't. So in the presence of decreased thyroid hormones, the negative feedback loop uh, is not inhibiting the anterior pituitary enough. That's why anterior pituitary is reading this message as thyroid hormone, the thyroid gland is not producing enough hormones, okay, which is the case, by the way. So it's producing more and more TSH to stimulate, to jumpstart, to kickstart this thyroid gland so that it produces more hormones. Okay. So in this case, you narrow it down to thyroid. Okay. The thyroid itself is faulty because it's itself has been either destroyed by autoimmune antibodies or uh, some removal of the thyroid gland that it's not producing enough, uh, enough uh, hormones, which are not inhibiting the anterior pituitary. Now, <clears throat> remember, in hypothyroidism case, the symptoms will tell you, the test will tell you, you will have T3, T4 less. And if TSH is up, it's the TSH which will tell you which of these three is at fault. So if you have the symptoms, the history, the, sw the swelling, whatever, uh, if you have less thyroid uh, hormones on the biochemical test, more TSH, this is uh, this will show this will lead you to diagnose that it's the thyroid uh, gland itself. And the most common causes for that is autoimmune Hashimoto's or removal of the thyroid uh, gland itself. Okay. Okay. So question number three. What is really wrong with Roxana? Uh, you need to refer to her lab results, look at it, read it carefully, and think about uh, why are her T4 levels decreased? Of course, they should. We have a general uh, understanding now that the, the, what's wrong with the with the with her is at the level of the thyroid gland itself. But what is the problem? There's a hint in the lab results. So TikTok, think about it. Okay. Now, remember that her lab results we sent for antimicrosomal microsomal antibodies, okay, thyroid antimicrosomal antibodies. And they came out to be increased. Okay. What does this mean? This means that her immune system has gone a bit strange and it's producing antibodies against the thyroid gland. But which part of the thyroid gland? If you remember this diagram where uh, we've discussed this in the hyperthyroidism case as well, it's just the normal production of thyroid hormones. Check this out. This enzyme peroxidase, okay? Uh, it's like one of the main characters in the formation of uh, thyroid hormones. It brings the iodide into iodine, then it causes the identification of the iodine to form uh, MIT and DIT together with thyroglob uh, thyroglobin, globulin. And then further final processing is also, uh, uh, it, it gets uh, quite busy in that as well. So if there are antibodies against the peroxidase enzyme itself, oops, uh, then you obviously will have less production of thyroid hormones and this is why the thyroid hormones is less and because it's Hashimoto's autoimmune thyroiditis okay so that's that question number four hmm. so we see that there's another test what's going on here we confirmed that it was Graves disease well uh, this is like a teaching moment, okay? It's not necessary uh, to run this particular test called resin uptake test, R3 resin uptake test. Uh, but we would like to explain it to you because in some cases, uh, the diagnosis is not this straightforward, all right? So this test needs to be done. That's one, that's one point, one reason. Number two reason, is that there is a lot of discussion of thyroid binding globulin, TBG, uh, in this test. 
uh, and this uh, the key part of this uh, question will be a busy discussion mainly revolving around what happens to the thyroid glands when they hit the blood uh, if you remember they are in they are mainly uh, attached most of the uh, thyroxine t4 which is released by the thyroid gland is attached with plasma proteins which plasma proteins we will discuss this in the key portion okay so once again there are two reasons for teaching this particular test one is to further clarify and confirm the diagnosis of hyperthyroidism uh, and specifically uh, what type of uh, hyperthyroidism is there uh, and number two it will also clarify to you uh, the role of tbg uh, uh, and sometimes even when the thyroid is fine uh, it's not uh, at the center of the problem it's the tbgs that the, the globulins that bind to thyroid hormones their fluctuation causes all sorts of uh, clinical manifestations of hyper or hypothyroidism if you're surprised wait for the discussion in the key section of question four all right let me just read out uh, these three lines here so this is the name of the test the t3 resin uptake test okay uh, Rouge's t3 uptake was increased uh, using all this information you have been giving so far explain this finding what is how do we explain this finding okay so small bits first what's a resin okay resin basically is a it's a chemical i, I won't go into chemistry this is not uh, the the forum for that but what is a resin resin is, is 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 a is a chemical or a formulation chemical formulation which is designed to uh, uh, capture or bind with something okay now it has a lot of uh, commercial use uh, in in chemistry and in manufacturing this that the other but right now our obvious focus is uh, how does it help us in our diagnosis okay so this resin this chemical formulation is designed uh, such that it can bind with the thyroid hormone okay that's why it's t3 resin uptake test okay now if you can imagine um, <clears throat> i'm sure you read eliza uh, in the introductory chapter of guyton right at the end he discusses what an eliza is eliza is an essay not e, not with an e with an a a double s a y essay there is a plate with a lot of wells in it the wells have uh, enzymes uh, a, a particular enzyme uh, in those wells i'm explaining the eliza very briefly first so when you uh, drop a, any 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 uh, substance on top of these wells which has a substrate for those enzymes obviously the enzyme will connect with the substrate and change it and that change is then read by a, a elisa reader okay that's that's the that's the elisa it's an essay a double s a y essay this resin uptake test is also an essay so if you can imagine a similar plate with wells in it and in those wells you have the t3 resin okay now these these wells are designed to uh, to connect with uh, the thyroid hormones uh, in the substance that you if the substance which you drop on these wells have the thyroid hormone they will these these wells will the resin in it will connect with that hormone simple as that okay so if that is clear one more addition to this is that when we run this test we have this plate right with the wells that i just described we also add the patient's uh, serum in it so in this in this case uruj's uh, blood will be taken will be drawn serum will be separated and then that serum a known amount of it will be added to the resin plate okay now now we are ready for the actual test now we will take now we will take uh, a radioactive uh, known quantity of radioactive t3 okay so these are these uh, formulations are available 
radioactive T3 is available, we will take a known amount of radioactive T3 and we will put it on top of this uh, setup, on top of this resin, which has those wells, which are ready, uh, as I explained, and which also has the patient's sample, okay? Okay, so let's extend that imagination. <clears throat> um, when in this whole setting, on this stage where you have the resin on a plate, and then you have Uruj's serum, which contains uh, thyroid hormones, both in the bound form and the free form, right? It's the bound form that you need to concentrate on. So this serum has thyroid binding globulin, TBG. And obviously that TBG will be uh, uh, saturated with both T4 and T3, right? Now, on this, you have now poured a known quantity of radioactive T3. What do you think will happen? Think. What will happen is that radioactive T3, because it's basically T3, but it's tagged, it's like, it's illuminated by the radioactive uh, bit, right? It will first try and find a place on the TBG, okay? If it finds its place, a, a free site to bind, it will first bind on that TBG, right? What about the rest of that radioactive T3? So if it finds certain sites, say five sites, for example, it will first bind to those five sites on the TBG, and uh, that's that. What about the rest of the uh, radioactive T3 molecules? Well, when they don't have any uh, site left on the TBG, they will then take up the resin. They will bind to the resin in those wells uh, outside of the TBG, okay? So what's going on? What are we doing? It's not a, a pointless uh, experiment, actually. It's, a, it's an ingenious one. Imagine that you have hyperthyroid, hyperthyroidism, okay? Uh, the thyroid hormones are already a lot in the blood, yes? Now, if they are a lot, then a lot of TBG will be saturated with T3, T4 and T3, yes? Okay? So in this situation, <clears throat> would our radioactive T3 have uh, uh, any any big prospects of getting uh, a vacant site on the TBG? No, it will have less because it's a, a serum from a hyperthyroid patient. So most of that radioactivity you will find bound to the resin in the plate and that's how it will be read. So if you find that your plate is illuminated by the resin being bound to the radioactive T3, you know that this sample is of a patient of hyperthyroidism, bingo. And if the resin takes up less of the radioactive T3, you should automatically assume that most of that radioactive T3 had an opportunity to bind with the TBG, which, was, which must have been vacant, right? So in that case, it's hypo. Thyroids. Here you go. So this is that. This is an actual picture, probably. Uh, this is TBG of in a hyperthyroid patient. Okay, as you can see, most of it is already bound with T4. Uh, the rest of the sites were vacant for our radioactive T3, and that's where it first bound. But the rest of the sample in 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 this, it, he has taken one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So let's imagine ten molecules of radioactive T3. So four had a chance to bind with TBG, okay? Only four. And the rest had to, uh, had to uh, uh, bind with the resin, which is outside of the TBG on the plate that we used, okay? So this, base, this, this whole test uh, is read from the resin bound T3. And since it's more, and there are values, obviously, standardized values that we know that, okay, if, uh, if the radioactive uh, resin connected T3 value is uh, XYZ above that, then you have hyperthyroidism of this patient. And here, 
as I explained in hypo, uh, you will have TBG much more available for your incoming T3 uh, and very less will be bound to the resin and hence uh, you will have a confirmed diagnosis of hypothyroidism. Okay, I hope this is clear. So TikTok, pause the video and think how this uh, information uh, further educates you about this diagnosis. Okay, so at this juncture, I wanted to uh, talk a bit about uh, the thyroid binding proteins themselves. And the reason is, um, well, I'll give you two examples. Uh, you'll see why uh, I felt the need to uh, address this issue uh, sort of separately. Uh, so let's take two scenarios. One is uh, pregnancy and the other is hepatic failure. In pregnancy, uh, let's say the thyroid is fine uh, in both cases. In pregnancy, it's fine. And so is the case in the liver failure. The thyroid gland is fine and it's producing uh, the normal amount of uh, thyroid hormones. However, in pregnancy, you have increased estrogens. Now, estrogen has an effect on the liver to produce more thyroid binding proteins. So this is an important point to note. While in hepatic failure, since these uh, proteins are made in the liver uh, and the liver has failed or is failing, the protein production by this liver will decrease. Okay. Remember, the thyroid is fine, but in one scenario, say the pregnancy or similar cases where the estrogen has gone up induces protein uh, formation from the uh, from the liver so you have artificially more uh, 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 thyroid binding proteins uh, roaming around in your blood as compared to a non-pregnant person and same is the case with uh, the hepatic failure person this person has lower amount of thyro thyroid binding uh, proteins as compared to a normal person. Now, this is, this is now the issue. In case of pregnancy and all the states where you have uh, artificially or abnormally bumped up the amount of thyroid binding proteins in the blood with a euthyroid status, euthyroid is, thyroid is fine. So whatever normal amount of hormone that thyroid will make and push it into blood, uh, everything gets bound to the proteins, the thyroid binding proteins, uh, uh, which basically means that the free amount of thyroid hormones will be less by no fault of thyroid gland. By virtue of there is just too much uh, uh, Ubers which collect this hormone. So the bound state, as you know, is not physiologically active. It's the free state that is active. So in pregnancy, as an example, you will have a situation where this uh, normally released thyroid hormone gets uh, bound with these proteins a lot, decreasing the free amount, i.e. the amount that is required for physiological action. So the person will, in, a, in, a, in the transient state, will become hypothyroid, all right, hypothyroid. However, uh, something says the day later, I will come to that. Let's go to the hepatic failure chap, okay? This guy is producing lesser amount of thyroid binding proteins. So the thyroid minding its own business, uh, uh, keeps on making normal amount of thyroid hormones, dumps it into blood, but there is not enough Ubers, okay? They're not any ubers in the blood i'm just giving you an example the carriers of thyroid hormones so they they are not they're not enough proteins thyroid binding proteins to bind to this uh, this normal amount of uh, thyroid hormones uh, so the free amount of uh, thyroid hormones will go up artificially artificially because everything is normal from the thyroid point of view but since the proteins are less you will have more free thyroid uh, uh, hormones floating around which will in transient uh, transiently will will uh, appear as hyperthyroidism okay but since i mentioned this these are transient states what happens is 
something good happens. In the first example, the, the pregnancy, what happens is uh, too much binding leads to lower amount of uh, free hormone that is available. This gives the message, as I already mentioned, that thyroid hormones, the level of thyroid hormone is in a negative feedback loop with the thyroid uh, uh, gland itself. So if you decrease the amount of free, free, free uh, thyroid hormones, this will uh, give uh, uh, the feedback to the thyroid gland that something wrong is happening. There is not enough thyroid hormone, although there is. If you measure the total amount of thyroid, T4 as an example, it will come out to be normal, but the free variety because of that protein issue has decreased. So this will give a sort of inappropriate feedback to the thyroid gland to bump up the production of thyroid hormones, which in this case is actually important because the pregnant lady has gone into hypothyroidism. So with this inappropriate message, uh, it's like two errors canceling each other. Okay. So this, 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 uh, this feedback loop will trigger uh, the th thyroid hormone to increase production of thyroid uh, hormones. Those thyroid hormones will come into the blood. The free amount of thyroid will go up. Okay. And the thing, the thing will be normalized and the pregnant person will be euthyroid and she will be fine. All the total number of uh, thyroid hormone will be a bit more, but eventually this will be regulated to normalcy. Same is the case with the uh, hepatic failure chap. Okay. Uh, his uh, uh, artificially bumped up free hormone, uh, hormones, thyroid hormones that are available in the blood because of deficiency of binding proteins will be read by the thyroid gland as there's too much going on. Let me decrease the amount of production so that when the decrease, the production uh, uh, level is decreased, less amount of thyroid hormones hit the blood and hence you thyroid status is uh, uh, again achieved. Um, so as you can see, this is the, this is, this is like another, uh, it's another small planet uh, ruled by uh, thyroid uh, uh, binding uh, proteins and uh, uh, reading this along with thyroid physiology is very, very important because these are those confusing MCQs and scenarios where uh, you will read the word euthyroid, but the clinical picture will be hyper or hypothyroid. And now you understand where is the trick coming from? It's coming from the thyroid binding uh, proteins. So let's now cover a, a bit of slides, uh, just uh, uh, two really. Uh, one is uh, this, yes. So in this slide, you'll see, uh, this is an overview slide, binding of thyroid hormones to plasma proteins in normal adults. So basically he has, he, he, he is outlined, this is from Ganong, this is very nice. Uh, uh, this and the next slide, both are from Ganong. So we have the TBG, which I've been mentioning. Uh, look at the amount of plasma, normal amount of plasma concentration of TBG is just two milligram per deciliter. Keep that in mind. Then there is uh, this protein called uh, transthyretin, which is uh, previously known as thy thyroxin binding pre-albumin or TBPA, but now it's the latest version uh, in uh, 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 in the uh, on the clinical front, it's called transthyretin. Okay, its concentration is 15 milligram per deciliter, definitely more than TBG. And then you see the albumin, the big uh, uh, plasma protein, and you see the amount, which is obviously 3,500 milligram per deciliter. So on the on the le plasma level, you see that TBG is the least and albumin is the most. However, check this out amount of circulating hormone, hormone bind in percentage, you see clearly that TBG binds much more uh, 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 T4 and T3 than transthyretin or albumin, even though albumin is significantly, significantly more. Still, this proves that the binding affinity for thyroid hormones of TBG is the most. And that's why it's almost a synonym to say thyroid binding protein, thyroid binding globulin. It's really the same thing because the rest of them are, uh, are negligible as com compared to the TBG. That's why you will, you have mostly uh, heard TBG when I have mentioned this. Okay. This, uh, this slide really encapsulates uh, a lot of stuff, uh, uh, which I have mentioned in the two scenarios, but this, encapsulates the whole thing. 
so what he does is he is talking about variation in uh, thyroid binding proteins. You, you may uh, uh, refer to it as TBG or that's for inclusion purposes, let's say it's proteins on the various parameters of thyroid function. So hyperthyroidism, we, we've already done this uh, with Uruj's case. Let's just revise it. The concentration of binding proteins, we assume that Uruj does not have a problem with the liver. Okay. Uh, and and uh, uh, she has a normal uh, uh, amount of uh, thyroid binding proteins circulating in her blood. Uh, however, the total plasma T4, T3, or RT3 are bumped up because she has Graves' disease. Uh, the free variety is also high, again, because the endogenous uh, hormones are more. Plasma T TSH is the clue uh, if somebody is reading this uh, table for the first time that it is Graves' disease because it's low. We have already discussed it. The clinical uh, picture that comes out is hyperthyroidism. Hypo is again, let's assume that the concentration of binding proteins is normal. However, the hormones, both bound, uh, total and free, will be low. TSH will obviously be high. The next, by the way, scenario is hypothyroidism. So we will go into details of this. And the clinical state, the clinical picture is of a hypothyroid. Now, these are the two which you need to concentrate on. This, so estrogens, and then uh, you have some uh, medicines. You have heroin, which obviously is... Uh, uh, a big issue these days, uh, tranquilizers, etc. These induce uh, more production of thyroid binding proteins. Okay, so remember this estrogens, pregnancy, the same thing. Okay, so if you have a high concentration of plasma proteins, the total amount, the total amount of uh, thyroid hormones, as I mentioned, will be high. However, it's the free thing, the, the biologically active th uh, thyroxine which is available, it will be kept normal because of that feedback loop which we have just, just discussed. A plasma TSH will be normal of course because the free variety has been kept in check. Okay, And remember all regulatory mechanisms from the pituitary to the thyroid they and the tissues they all respond to biologically available free uh, thyroxine and T3 not the bound one. Okay, So the clinical picture in this case is after settlement after the transient state is over it's euthyroid initially in the transient state it will be as i mentioned hypo it will go into hypothyroid but eventually it will even out and it will become euthyroid uh, the last point is uh, as i mentioned the liver failure chap along with that glucocorticoids androgens and medicate some certain medications they decrease the amount of production of thyroid binding uh, proteins and hence decrease the total amount of uh, bound thyroid ho hormones in blood with these with these tbg uh, with these tbps okay however the normal free variety is again through that negative feedback loop is kept normal plasma tsh hence is normal and the clinical state is euthyroid i i can totally envisage making some confusing mcqs based on uh, this uh, thyroid hormone binding proteins uh, in the exams Thank you very much. Question five. What's with the goiter? Why does she have goiter? Uh, we know that thyroid hormone uh, uh, enlarges in hyperthyroidism. But she has hypothyroidism. What's going on? Why does she have that? TikTok, I think. Okay. So Rosana has hypothyroidism. We know that, right? Uh, and perhaps it's surprising for you uh, that she has goiter. Uh, but if you think about it, TSH uh, is high. In this case, we have we've discussed how why this is high. So it has trophic effects. So it has not just uh, effects on the production of uh, the, the hormones. Obviously, it affects the gland and all the tissue inside, including all the cells, etc. So that effect will still be going on. It's just that peroxidase is, is being hit by these antibodies. So it's not the biochemical function has been affected. However, uh, the poor cells are being bombarded by TSH and they will undergo what they used to undergo normally in a normal person, which is increase in size uh, and increase in number. So hypertrophy and hyperplasia, both will um, uh, take place, enlarging the gland 
under the barrage of increased uh, levels of TSH. Uh, the only problem is that all of this thing will be present in the relative decrease in thyroid hormones. Unlike Graves' disease in which you have the gland which is big along with increased in thyroid uh, hormones. Okay, so this is an important difference between the two goiters. All right, so uh, Roxana started receiving T4, synthetic T4. Uh, things were good, things are good. Our hypothyroid symptoms, which was why she visited you, uh, are being addressed nicely. Now, uh, recall that a physician uh, in the initial part of the uh, history, uh, the data that we gave for the case, he used TSH levels to adjust her T4, synthetic T4 dosage, okay? Now is the point when we get to discuss the why. Why was that? And more importantly, why is this crucial? Okay, so TikTok, think. <clears throat> now, well, it's really back to that feedback loop again. Uh, if you remember, understand that, this is easy peasy for you. So, a an accurate, good, a reasonable D4 dose, uh, if given to Ruxana, this should bring the TSH down through the negative feedback loop. Okay, I won't explain it again. You refer back to the previous part where I explain it. Okay, if the T4 is correct and it's done by a bit of hit and trial method, obviously depending on the experience of the physician, if the T4 that he's giving her is at a right level then, then the, uh, the test for TSH will show that TSH has come down. Okay, so that's, that's good news. If it's too little, uh, then TSH will remain elevated and the goiter will not go away. Okay, uh, the situation will still be awkward for the patient. If the T4 is too much, then she will develop, then the TSH, the TSH will uh, decrease below normal, uh, below normal and we don't want that either. Okay, so the TSH uh, really helps us in dosing the t4 uh, due to this uh, uh, this this information why is it crucial well we don't want to give it give her too less but what's the point in that uh, the symptoms will be, still be there she'll be still suffering from hypothyroid and if we give her more then she develops graves disease and graves disease is no not good and uh, we have discussed this already refer back to the uh, discussion that we had on graves so uh, it's crucial that we look at TSH and, and tighter our uh, T4 uh, dosage according to the TSH levels.